Hi, everybody. We're a few seconds early, uh, but welcome. Welcome to Let's Get Real. I know that we are streaming not only on my channels, but on my guest channels, too. So if you're new, welcome on Let's Get Real. We like to talk about all things real, keeping your voice real on social, how to have real connections, how to make your business sound real. Um, so that's what we're talking about today. I'm so excited to be back. Last week, I was just sort of dragging all week. I wasn't really ready for the new year to start. I wasn't ready to be back in front of the screen. So this week, we're back at it. And I'm very, very honored because I've been doing this now for a year. I started last January with this live stream. And the man who told me I could do it is my guest today. So let me tell you a little bit about Jason Falls for a anybody who's been living under a rock and doesn't know him. Jason leads influence strategy for Cornette, a full service advertising agency in Lexington, Kentucky. He is also the executive producer of the Marketing Podcast Network. He hosts two podcasts, Digging Deeper, a marketing and creativity show for Cornette and Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. He also has his third book out now. If you haven't read it, read it, read it. Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. I am so happy and honored to have Jason here. So Jason, welcome. Man, if you're honored to have me on your show, you got a low bar. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate so, it. Thanks for having me. Of course. So for those who, who don't know my history with Jason, when I started in this Back in 2008, I was just kind of finding my way on Twitter and asking questions to anyone that would answer them. And Jason would tweet me back and I'd ask him questions and he'd tweet me back. And I thought he was like the Silicon Valley, you know, techie genius. Nope, he was just out there figuring it out too. But he uh, he guided me and, and I appreciate you and your mentorship. So welcome. It's good to see you. Well, it's good to see you and thank you for the kind words. Um, you know, I'm, I'm like you, I'm was just in the pool navigating, figuring out how to swim. And, um, yeah, I might've been maybe a few months ahead of a few other people, but I was happy to, you know, chime in and I love what you've been able to build and do, uh, over the course of the last what, 14 years or so now. Um, and so glad to be here. Well, good. So let's kind of talk about you built this brand, not only your brand, but some business brands through the years. So let's kind of talk about your history. You started out way back with Social Media Explorer. I know you're speaking at the conference this year, which you've never done before, which blows my mind that you're going to be at Social Media Marketing World, which is awesome. Um, you know, you went on, you've had some full-time jobs, some independent consulting. You're now with Cornette. Kind of talk to us about your, your journey, how you got here. I'm, I'm the social media ping pong ball, it seems. Um, but now I, uh, you know, I spent before this whole social media thing happened, I spent 15 years as a college athletics PR guy. So I was in a field, what they call it, they called it sports information then. I think it's called athletic media relations now. But basically, I was a PR guy for college sports teams. And when my son was born, I was like, I, I, I don't want to travel as much. So we moved uh, back home to Louisville. Uh, which is where my ex-wife is from. I'm from Eastern Kentucky. And I landed at Doe Anderson at a time when brands were asking questions about the internet. Blogs were happening, social networks, forums, and message boards were happening. And we had several clients that were asking those questions. And I just happened to spend a lot of free time, you know, basically messing around on the internet. And so I started answering their questions and they liked my ideas. And so I kind of landed in a, a director of social media position in the mainstream advertising marketing PR world. Um, back when I really didn't know anything about mainstream advertising, marketing, PR, I had this little niche PR experience over here and I had a little bit of radio experience, you know, from, from my younger days. And so I was, you know, literally just trying to figure it all out too, but I went to a social media conference in 2006, I think it was, and everybody, the whole conference was focused on how to game the dig algorithm, how to get your content number one on the front page of dig. And I thought that that was just the, the, that was the, the opposite of social media, the opposite of the ethos of what we were doing here. Um, you know, it was just a bunch of SEO hacks trying to figure out how to cheat. And I called them out on a blog post on this little tiny blog called Social Media Explorer that I started that nobody knew what it was, but I tagged them all. <laughs> and, uh, and so they all came and yelled at me and called me names and defended themselves and all that good stuff. But all of a sudden, everybody knew who I was because all these big name people in the digital marketing space 
were, you know, calling me out and, and arguing with me. And I realized if I stir shit up, people pay attention. So I started stirring shit up and I've been doing yep. it ever since. <laughs> that sounds like a, like a perfect day in the Jason Falls world. Throw something <laughs> out there. Let's see who will argue with you. Right. Exactly. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So you've kind of evolved into this windfluence influencer marketing space. So talk a little bit about what does that mean? If I'm a brand and I want to get in front of more people and I, I have this idea of influence market, influencer marketing, mm -hmm. talk to, about what is that? And from a small business point of view, how can small businesses take advantage of that kind of marketing? Well, the, the, the idea behind Winfluence is, is really that the mainstream media and anytime you hear people talk about influencer marketing um, on a broad scale in the mainstream media where small business owners who aren't in the marketing day to day like you and I are, anytime you hear anything about it, it's always negative. It's always, well, this person, you know, airbrushed clouds on their Instagram images or this person bought their followers or, you know, some controversy happens. And so a lot of people, you know, in the you know, mainstream America, a lot of small business owners and whatnot, when they hear influencer marketing or they hear influencers, they think these are superficial people. They're not very effective. You know, everybody cheats, all that good stuff. And um, and I just felt like you know, because I work with influencers every day for brands at Cornette. And I know that if you find the right influential voice, someone who's really trustworthy, um, who has an, uh, an impact and true influence over their audience, and you partner with them in a relevant way, you can actually leverage these third party influencers to you know, move your brand forward, do good things for your business. And so the concept behind Winfluence is really to say is, is really about using influencer marketing strategically and thinking about it a little differently. So you don't let the mainstream bias about influencers skew your thinking. And the way that I boiled that down in the book and, and what I tell people is instead of thinking it in, uh, of it in terms of influencer marketing with an R on the end of that word, stop thinking about the noun. Stop thinking about the channel, the person that you're trying to reach and start thinking about what you're trying to do. You're trying to influence. So if you drop the R and think of it as influence marketing, I'm trying to influence an audience to take action. Now, all of a sudden, the blinders come off. Your perspective is much wider. And then you can start to really think about, OK, how do I persuade that audience to take action? It might be that I find online influencers, Instagrammers, TikTokers, YouTubers that can help me communicate to the audience that I want to reach. But it might also be that if I'm a small business and I sell mostly to parents in my town, it might be that the president of the local PTA is my number one influencer, and I don't care how many followers he or she has on Instagram. So you have to think of it more strategically in terms of what are we trying to accomplish. And if you do, you start to see the channels and the pathways to that influence becoming much more clear. And so that's kind of the point of the book. And the way that I would say that small business owners should or can get involved is kind of use that 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 PTA president kind of idea who in your community who uh, among the people that you are trying to reach who's influential to them and reach out to that person it doesn't matter again if they're big online they could be uh, but it might be someone just in your community and say hey you know we think the people that you talk to are our prospective customers how can we work together what kind of partnership can we come up with what um, assets can we provide you to help you tell the story to your you know fans followers audience about us and if you look at it from the sort of simple way to communicate a message to an audience instead of being fascinated by TikTok and youtube and uh, oh look at how many followers this person has then you start to actually think about it much more strategically and can accomplish a lot more for your business. You make a great point. We actually have a question from Andrew who wants to know, what are your thoughts on the world of paid influences versus authentic super fans? Well, I think, you know, authentic super fans are always going to be your preference because if you've got, you know, someone who's just absolutely gaga, ape shit nuts about your brand, um, they're definitely going to tell a much more authentic story. They're going to be more persuasive. Um, it, it might be that they're a little too crazy and they scare the hell out of people. Um, had some of those before. Um, but that that authentic super fan, you know, is that sort of built in marketing audience that's generally the promise of like word of mouth marketing programs. Let's recruit an army of people that are just so passionate about your brand that they just go out and market for you. 
realistically, though, if you go back and look at all of the great word of mouth marketing um, case studies throughout the, the recent you know, probably 20 or 30 years, Maker's Mark Ambassadors is one, Harley Owners Group's another, you know, there's plenty of examples out there. The, the one common thread in all those great success stories of word of mouth marketing where super fans, authentic super fans are your marketing force, there's probably about a dozen companies in the world that that works for. Or maybe there's a couple of dozen companies in the world that, that that works for. Because if you sell insurance, I dare you to find me someone who's super passionate about and, and a super fan, authentic super fan about the insurance company, unless it, it not, not including the people who work there, right? Who's passionate about insurance? Who's passionate about a hospital? Who's I mean, unless you work there, those there's there's certain brands and products out there that you're not going to be a super fan for. So that's where the opportunity to engage with paid influencers, and sometimes you can find influencers who will do it for things other than being paid. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll touch on an example of that in a minute. But that's where finding these influencers where, okay, we're trying to reach soccer moms in this community. How do we do that? Well, let's find uh, people who create content that appeals to soccer moms in this community. And let's figure out a way to partner with them so that they will talk about our business and our brand. Um, and so you might reach out to them and say, how much you know, does it cost? Or you might reach out to them and say, hey, we've got these items of value that are valuable to you that we'd like to provide to you uh, in exchange for you being a partner with us. And the, the way that that works is probably better illustrated in the B2B space. I am technically a B2B influencer because I have a podcast, I write, I speak, et cetera. There are some software companies who like to reach out to me to say, we'd like to partner with you to do things for us. <clears throat> and so I'm like, okay, great. 90% of the time, I don't tell them I want you to pay me X dollars. 90% of the time I say, I want access to your CEO. I want access to the executive leadership team within your company because if I get intel about your software, about your agency, about your company that I can then turn around and use to further establish my thought leadership in the business, that's worth a lot to me. It's worth a lot more than a short-term cash engagement. So you're going to find some influencers out there that you've got something they want. Maybe it's product. Uh, maybe it's access to a, even a bigger audience that, than they have in your current customer base. Um, you know, a lot of influencers are looking to always looking to grow their audience. If you say, hey, you know, we've got, you know, 25,000 people on our email list and we want to promote you to our customers. Let's figure out a way where we can exchange some value there. So there's ways to do it without having to pay. However, I will say for the influencers out there. A lot of times this is their job. This is their career. This is how they, you know, pay their bills and feed their kids. So let's not disrespect the fact that when they're investing time and creativity and talent into doing something with you, let's not discount the fact that they should probably be paid for that. So keep that in mind as you're reaching out to folks and, and see what you can do to negotiate good opportunities. You make such great points. We're actually working on this with one of our clients right now, and we've got a list of people who are, big names who the CEO of the company knows, but we have to decide, well, who are we asking what? Some of them, we're going to ask them, hey, you've got a huge Instagram following. Will you post this on Instagram? We're going to send you all of this stuff. Um, but you know, this person, they're the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Maybe they'd put it on their intranet inside their company. So I think it's yep. important to think about where does it seem the most legit that they would actually share it with the people who will you know, bring in views, bring in reach, bring in sales. So it's, true. it's important to kind of play that out. That's very true. I, I, one, one thing that I would, uh, would also uh, let people remind people of is so many businesses and brands struggle these days with creating really compelling content on social networks. That's where you need to engage your influencers first. Hey, we want you to create content for us. Not necessarily we want access to your audience, but we want you to bring your creative creative energy to our brand and, and start helping us figure out how to do this. Um, that might relate to or might translate to a longer term partnership, which is probably going to be good for you because there will be exposure to their audience along the way. But one trend you're starting to see, it started at the celebrity level, which was really more of a PR thing, but you're starting to see it trickle down. A lot of agencies and brands now are hiring influencers as like creative directors within their organizations, yeah. full-time jobs. And it's because 
for TikTok specifically, um, you know, it's harder for brands and or traditionally trained advertising creatives who don't necessarily play on TikTok. It's hard for them to sort of figure out, okay, what works here? What translates? Well, it's quicker and easier to go find somebody who is an established TikToker who knows how things are created there and how things translates. Engage them to help your brand figure that out. It's like you're in my brain with our whole strategy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just said last week, we need to think about, does this brand need to be on TikTok? And if it does, it's not me. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Well, I'm it's the same, it's the same thing with, with blogs or podcasting. And we used to tell people, you know, 15 years ago, who, should you be blogging? Well, you should be blogging if you have a perspective, a voice, uh, you know, on the industry, uh, you have something to say and you have someone to say it. Right. And if you've got someone who's a great writer, who's passionate about it, who wants to you know, be out there uh, creating that content, then you should probably have a blog or a podcast or a live stream or whatnot. It's the same thing with, you know, should you be on TikTok? Well, do you have something to contribute there that's going to be valuable? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Jason, uh, Andrew just wrote again and said the first example of this, I remember years ago was Rackspace hiring Robert Scoble 10 plus yep. years ago. Do you remember that? I do. And it was really interesting because uh, Robert had been uh, trying to create TV content for Fast Company, I think at the time. Uh, he had Fast Company TV and, and, and he had left Microsoft and was kind of his own guy there for a while. But then Rackspace came along and basically said, this guy's a big name in the tech space we're just going to hire him and he's going to be our sort of in-house, you know, creative person. And for, I think it was three or four years, they did a lot of really good content in the sort of B2B and tech space. And it was, that was exactly, Andrew, you, you hit the nail on the head. That was the, probably the first example I can think of too. That's a great example. Well done. So for those of you who have not started dabbling in influence marketing, it's time you buy the book. It's available on Amazon. You can go out there and read my review because I read it and I wrote about it. It's fantastic. Um, and there's a lot of information in there that we try to implement with our clients, even on a very small scale. So you don't have to be a big company with a big budget and you're looking at the number one TikToker in the world. That's not really what this is about. You know, you, you want to look at where's the, the best influencer for you and is it a person or is it a network or is it offline? You know, what, what makes like your example of the PTA, which is course very close yeah. to my heart so um, another thing so, yeah. to think about there real quick i don't mean to step on you here but an, another good example i've used that people go oh yeah if you find someone let's say you're in louisville kentucky like we are if you find uh, someone who's got four hundred thousand followers on instagram and you think oh they'd be great to engage you know with for my brand and you're a louisville business there's a pretty good chance that less than one percent of that four hundred thousand people are going to be in louisville Right. So you got to do some homework and understand who's really reaching the audience that I want to reach. It's not always the big people. Sometimes someone with twenty five hundred followers, but most of them are in Louisville is going to be a far better investment than someone like that. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So for anybody who needs some guidance on this whole thing, you can find Jason on social. You can also find him at teamcornet.com. Um, so reach out to Jason if you need some guidance on how to do this for your business. He is, he, he knows everything you need to know. Um, and if he doesn't help fake it or figure it out, <laughs> I'll look it up. I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No task too small. Well, Jason, I am so honored that you joined me today and I appreciate all your advice and guidance through the years, whether or not you even knew you were giving it to me. Um, you know, I watch your live streams. I listen to your podcast. I definitely learn from you and I appreciate you being steps ahead of me along the way. So thank you. Well, thank you and congratulations on now over a year of doing this. I told you so. <laughs> you did. You did indeed. And uh, next week, we actually will not have a show. Um, we're going to take the day off for Martin Luther King Day and honor that day. But um, on January 24th, my guest will be Andy Robinson. You might know her online as Hijinx Marketing um, on Twitter. So take a look then. Mark your calendar. We'll see you then. And Thank you, everybody, for joining me today. Have a wonderful week. And until the next show, keep it real.